I'm George Reister and he's Ralph Amsden and this is Reister or Wrong, the intersection where sports, business, society, and pop culture meet the truth. Absolute fire, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Facts only here. Check your feelings at the door before you even show up. So for you, for those of you who are new here, I'm George Reister, former NFL player, host of Mad Dog Sports Radio's nightcap and also you can hear me on fox sports radio as well and ralph amson is a writer uh arizona historian basketball junkie and all around great guy (laughs) um father uh moved from arizona out to charlotte and we continue to press on here even though he abandoned us here on the west coast because he was tired of living in an inferno and if you go back and listen to some of the uh, episodes further back Ralph actually when he moved from Arizona to move to Charlotte he actually moved into into the money pit where he bought a house basically almost sight, un- sight unseen not and- almost <laughs> and it was literally and it's literally turned first it was a death trap and now it has consumed his life and his wife's life trying to fix it up Ralph so where for those of people who've been there since the beginning, what's the update on the Amsden household that was crum- literally crumbling below your feet and had electric wires that you could have stepped on and killed yourself? Well, uh, so far we have uh, replaced all the the electrical boxes and wiring. We have remodeled four rooms. My, my wife's uh, remodeling a bathroom right now. As we speak, we replaced a pool pump and pool motor. Um, while I was standing outside the other day, one of the springs snapped in the automatic garage door, and I'm, I'm glad I wasn't nearby uh, when that happened. But we we have completely insulated the attic. We've we've dried out the crawl. We don't have crawl spaces in Arizona, so we had to, to dry out, reinforce, and like seal the crawl space to keep the house from just caving in. Uh, at any point in time, we're getting all new windows. We're trying to remodel the kitchen. There's a million things going on. I got this closet office that uh, it has been completely uh, remodeled and and fitted to do our, our streaming. So just one thing at a time. And I think if we do maybe one thing a week, sometime in the next 15 years, we'll be finished. <laughs> This dude thought that he was, dude, he was so excited about this house. He was like, yo, Aaron loves it. We're so excited. He walked into it, bro. And the people were, how would you describe them? They were. They never moved out. They left all their stuff. They left. They took our money and they are gone somewhere having a great time. Uh, but they did. They did lose a huge chunk of uh, of the um the equity that had built up uh, over time and especially in the middle of this housing craze or whatever, they ended up having to write like a $76,000 check to the IRS. So <laughs> I'm not, I'm not mad uh, that they, they don't have our full bag, but we did help them get out from under the government's thumb. Best of luck to them, wherever they are. I never ever want to see them for any reason. <laughs> All right. Hey, you, you guys, we usually start out with our sports stories and some stuff that's going on but there is a story that ralph brought to me mind you the the and and anybody who looks at ralph if you don't know ralph ralph looks like a standard issue white man but he's not (laughs) like (laughs) but but he's not he's he's half native american like for real quarter quarter native quarter northern cheyenne to be to be specific on, on yes. my dad's side. Grew up on the reservation for part of his my life. My dad did, yeah. Yeah. So so this is so this so we have Ralph. And mind you, I would consider my, myself part of quote unquote the culture. And um Ralph brought this story to me about a rapper that I have not even heard of, but apparently I have heard one or two of his songs. When I'm in the passenger seat of your car, George, what music is playing? Oh, oh the oh, okay. So the first time that Ralph, well, the only time Ralph has been in the passenger seat of my car, uh, there was country music playing. 
I believe it was Luke Bryan. <laughs> yes, it was Luke Bryan playing. But like I'm I've been basically a hip hop head like a lot of my of my life. But as I've gotten older, some of this music, bro, since since the mumble rap has come out, I've been out. Like I'm like lyrics matter, contents matters, and I don't want to hear you talking about how many black men you're gonna shoot and how many you're gonna kill and how many and how many uh women you're gonna have sex with. I it, it it's just it's just exhausting. I like have something else to say besides that. But Ralph brought this story about this rapper named Pooh Shiesty. Right? What a name. Yes. And the name apparently is very fitting. So Pooh Shiesty just got arrested, but I'll let Ralph tell you why he got arrested. Wow, the why. The why, okay, um, the why the why would be the reason that anybody, uh, the a lot of people in the modern uh, social media age um, get busted. It's because you literally posted the evidence for everybody else to see. But I'll give you some background on on what is an insane story. Uh, Pusha Iste was just indicted by uh, <laughs> the Federal Bureau of Investigation uh, in a double shooting and robbery. Um, which if you want to talk about street cred, that's, I mean, I, I essentially, he's going to be very credible behind bars <laughs> for a very long time. Um, but w- what ended up happening is Pooh Shiesty, whose name is Lontrell Williams. Um, he was renting a car from a couple of guys and he was hoping to, um, also buy shoes off the people that he was renting a car from shoes and some weed. So he pulls up with a couple of friends, one of which is named Bobby Brown. And if you're hanging out with somebody named Bobby Brown, you know, it's going to be a wild time. So he pulls up in a car with a couple of his friends. And I guess this was all caught on a uh, security camera pulls up with a couple of his friends to, to buy some shoes. And uh, he gets a hold of these high end sneakers that he's trying to buy from the people he is renting a car from so they can readily ID him. And uh, instead of just purchasing the shoes and the weed and getting extension on his car rental and then (laughs) going their separate way um, at two in the afternoon, one of his associates pulls a gun on the, the, the two men that had the shoes Um one of them got shot in the the ass and the other one got shot in the hip and they they left the scene well uh when they left the scene what happened george oh when they when when they left the scene poo shitesy he ends up getting arrested right no wait wait wait, 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 wait. hold up which, which which part of the story you're talking about i'm, I'm asking you what they left behind oh yes because they're, so, they're oh, trying yes. to get so, away Yes, they're trying to get so they're away in a with McLaren. These sneakers. Yes, they're in a McLaren. They drop a Gucci or Louis bag with Louis. forty thousand dollars in it in cash. Over forty thousand dollars in cash. They dropped out of a McLaren, and then when they find the bag of money, the the day before or previously. Uh, Pooh Shiesty had been flashing money on Instagram. They find bills with the same serial numbers on it that are in the bag of $40,000. So you rob somebody when you have $40,000 in cash over a pair of shoes and weed. Listen, I don't care if you buy a pound of weed, pound of weed. He had enough money to buy anything he wanted to buy. I, I this is the most ridiculous story I have heard in such a long time, and this is why names matter. You call yourself Poo Shiesty, you're probably going to do shiesty shit. Stealing from the man that you are renting a car from, shooting them and leaving them alive, and then probably leaving more than enough money to pay for the shoes behind on accident, already as dumb as you could possibly be. But then, I mean, maybe I guess you can expect those guys not to snitch. How, why? Um, if if they aren't, I mean, like, why? Be, you well, because shot you, me. Right. Be, well, that's just it, because you shot them. You shot them. And so if, if the thought is, like, that you wouldn't 
do something about them snitching. Well, they already have evidence. You shot them. So maybe they would keep quiet, but it's hard to keep quiet when you have you to tell go on to- yourself. They well, told on themselves. And no you have to, to go. Exactly. And you have to go to the hospital when you get shot. Oh, who shot you? Oh, man, I'm not telling. I'm not saying anything. Right. But I then, tripped and fell on a bullet. Yeah. And then even if they didn't snitch, they are caught on camera. So you know who was leaving. You know who was there. You don't even have to snitch at that point in, point in time. And if you're going to commit a crime, please do it in like a Camry or a Tercel or something <laughs> like a, a Sentra. Do it in something that there's more than one of. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna get away. My getaway car is a McLaren. Dude, you can't even go over a damn speed bump. You go over a speed bump, your car is toast. This is this was by far one of the dumbest things of all time. And this goes to show how the hell are you going to be flashing money? I, I've never understood the flashing money on Instagram thing. Never understood because now you make yourself a target for everybody else. They're like, Oh yo, he always got a hella cash on him. I'm, I'm, I'm robbing him. I mean, dude, you have made yourself a target. And I know that a lot of these dudes want street cred, but mind you, there was a dude that I knew out here in Cali, Right. I don't even feel like I feel uncomfortable uttering his name. He introduced himself to me at a club. Yo, 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 I'm blank. I'm the nigga that robbed Kevin Garnett. And I'm like, I remember what happened with the Kevin Garnett story. They pulled up on 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 them with AKs. And it doesn't matter how much security that you have. Doesn't you can have Floyd Mayweather's bodyguards. If somebody pulls up on you with AK-47s, multiple what are you going to do leave your keys in the car and walk into the gas station yes whatever they I, want I, they can they can have it you're forgetting i've been in the situation <laughs> <laughs> so ralph has more street cred than than uh me because he has been his car has been carjacked and then in a in a high speed police chase. So Google Dr Pepper and Mercedes Benz, and if you don't get it, it should be the first story that come comes up. But if it doesn't, just put Arizona in it, and you will get it, and you will understand Ralph Amson's life, gangster, gangster. But um, Poo, your 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 boy Poo Shiesty though, he won't be making any more records anytime soon unless it is a jail. Uh, you know, a jail hit. And that's the thing is, is that you, he just blew up. So why are you doing this? But he also got arrested a month ago for potentially shooting somebody else. Like at what point in time, like I, I remember my high school coach, he told some of my teammates, not at Buckley, but at Silmar. He was like, you can either gang bang or you can play football because you can't do both. Like you can't serve two masters. So you can either be a record. You can either be an artist or you can be a gangster. You can't be both. And he his street cred was more important to, to him. And now instead of reaping the benefits of making millions of dollars and living the lifestyle that he wants to for a long time, he's going to be in jail. Big what do you think dummies. of that? What do you think of the hashtag? Because that that that's what gets to me. What is it so, like? The free push icedy. Free <laughs> push icedy got to free himself. He had a free ticket. Like he had a ticket out of his life. I just I just want to know, like, because you you talked, uh, you said that I I'm uh, have the look of the the run of the mill factory uh manufactured white guy or whatever <laughs> but i the the i think the, the the whitest i ever feel is when i see the free so and so hashtag and then so then i like i'm like oh these people are passionate about this topic and then i'll like research what they did and i'll be like whoa 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 <laughs> <laughs> no just no. one minute before we're just indiscriminately letting people out of jail let's go back like this person has seven women accusing them of violent assault. And we like, that's just the hashtag. Like, 
I'm sure there's other people that we can find to free. We have stocked all of our prisons. They are very full. Uh, I don't know. I don't particularly know if Pooh Shiesty should be getting your energy when it comes to like uh, that that type of thing. But good, best of free, luck. Free Pooh Shiesty. Man, man, get the hell out of here. There, there's a lot of other people in jail for actual like things that are legal now, like weed. People have felonies for weed where it's it's uh it's legal in most states for re- or, or a lot of states for recreational use i mean h- how about free alex caruso <laughs> free, i mean like like free free somebody who's got charges for uh in a small amount of personal use weed free those people free poo shiesty bad bad free these it's uh, gonna be it's gonna be uh, n- no good when he ends up like a cellmate with twenty years uh, that he has to get done, and his cellmate's got like twenty five left, uh, of which they've already done uh, twenty, and it's for uh, getting caught with an ounce <laughs> sometime yeah. in the late nineteen seventies. D- I-, I can't make any sense of that. All right, next thing up, the NBA is. Is it's weird because the NBA is not down bad. They are like it, the NBA is thriving in terms of the the, the playoffs because this is probably the most interesting playoffs that we've had in a long time. You you don't have blowouts. I mean, there there have been probably three blowouts the entire playoffs. Three three or four. We're talking like sixty some odd games. And they've been close. You don't know who's going to win. Series have flipped on their heads. The, the the Clippers have won two series after being down 2-0. They look dead against the Suns. Now they've shown life. The Atlanta Hawks, you thought they were done against the Knicks. Then you thought they were done against the 76ers. Now they're against the Milwaukee Bucks. The, the Bucks that first they looked great and then the Bucks came back, blew them out, and then the then the Bucks won again. And then Trey Young is out. So you're like, dude, Trey Young is out after they just uh lost the game. There's no way they win. They're beating the they did not beat the Bucks because Giannis got hurt. They were beating the Bucks already without Trey Young. And then Giannis is clearly gonna be out like probably into next season some some point in time. But the NBA playoffs is still as interesting as it was. But now you're going to have 10 All-Stars miss playoff games in one playoffs. By the at at 7 it was already a record. By and it was by a big margin at 7. So now you're going to be at 10 in one playoffs and LeBron said when they started the season after 71 days after they won the championship, he said that this was too soon to start the season and you were absolutely going to have a bunch of injuries. And I don't see how you can say that he's not right right now, Ralph. The, the link is impossible to make. It's just correlation does not prove causation, I guess is what I'd have to lean on here because how would extra rest help somebody from landing wrong on a jump. How is extra rest have anything to do with where somebody's foot is placed under the basket when you're coming down? How does extra rest keep Pat Bev from caving in Devin Booker's nose with his face? I don't, you can individually dissect each one of these injuries and say like, I don't know if this is an overuse injury even with the Anthony Davis one where it felt like maybe it was just the fact that he never let his body fully heal from everything that he was going through. That could have happened at any time. And also he's very young and he just seems to be kind of injury prone Yeah. for, for if this, if this, honestly, if this is an issue, then who's the one player who is always hurt in the playoffs that should be hurt right now, Chris Paul, right? And he is not in great shape. He's had to battle both COVID and a shoulder injury. And it looked like he almost broke his arm when when he uh, – and it was very accidental, even though Pat Bev mocked him after it happened, um, when he when he got upended and fell on his back and his arm. I 
in that moment, I was like, oh, he just broke his wrist. So there goes Chris Paul. Like, I, I just think that the, the style of the game, the up and down style of the game, the lack of time spent in half court, uh, positionless basketball where nobody really has defined roles of where they're going to be and what the expectations are. It's just bodies flying all over the place, 40 footers, long rebounds, stuff like that. I think all of that really contributes to extra injuries over time. That's just my opinion. Also, you went to a theme park yesterday and could barely walk this morning. I <laughs> gardened for two hours yesterday and it took me 30 minutes to get out of bed. So I'm genuinely surprised when anybody does anything physical for any reason that they can even get up the next day. It's a wonder <laughs> to me that we even have as many healthy players as we have left in the NBA, but it is a, it is a freaking bummer to see stars get hurt. It is, yeah. it, it's an enormous bummer, but like I just, when broken down on an individual basis, I can't bring myself to say, Oh, LeBron was right. The short amount of rest is what's causing somebody's ankle to turn when someone else runs into it. See, I can't see. I, I get your point. And, and I think it's fair. I also think that the numbers matter. You know what I mean? Like that maybe on an individual micro level that, that, yeah, that, that the, uh, that correlation does not equal causation. But when you look at the fact that of what happened in the, in the NFL in 2011, when the players were were off and then uh, when they were negotiating the, the CBA and had the lockout. And then even though players were off longer, they didn't have an acclimation period and they went just back to hitting and all that stuff like super quick. Their injuries were up that particular year, like significantly. And then this year, when the players had more time off and then they had when they were negotiating the CBA, well, sorry, COVID, they had m more time off and then they ended up doing a long acclimation period and not having all of that additional overuse in the off season where you're hitting and all that stuff. Like, even though you don't have pads on, you're still pushing, hitting, running full speed, doing f in season things in the off season. And then injuries were down this year in the NFL. So while it doesn't work on a micro level, I do think on a macro level, when you look at the numbers and see that injuries are down, when players do have more time to rest and build up their bodies, I mean, it's just like players who play in the Olympics, they're going to be worse off. Well, some of them are going to be worse off next season because you, the season's pushed back further. Granted, pe people who finished in, in April, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Or May, it doesn't matter. But when you're pushing out in June and July, now players who may be playing on the Olympic team, that's going to be tough on them like Devin Booker for the next NBA season. What do you think of my theory that positionless basketball has people in places that they wouldn't typically be? What do you mean? So if you're, let's say it would take Russell Westbrook, right? In any other situation, in any other era, Russell Westbrook's not hitting the boards the way he does. Correct. Right? Your shooters are not necessarily your slashers. Yep. Right? Correct. Uh, Correct. And your bigs aren't necessarily bringing the ball up the court. Correct. Like Jokic, Giannis. Yanish, Yanish, yes, and guys like like that, yes. Yeah. So, but in this era, everybody's doing everything, which means that everybody's everywhere. It would be like taking the lines off a highway. I think you're gonna have more crashes. That's hmm. that's just my. I feel better about that than I do. Like three extra weeks would have kept somebody from an injury that looked like in the moment was inevitable. Yeah, but the thing is, m maybe they would have been faster or done something just a tad bit better if they were a tad bit healthy. So hmm. th th this is something to d debate about. And you guys can weigh in 818-293-7547. Shoot us a text. 
Give us a call or shoot us an email. I'm mad. I M M A D at unafraidshow.com. The next thing up is so if anybody, well, actually, the get woke, go broke crowd, there were so many. Explain the concept of get okay. woke, go broke. So get woke, go broke. I would say it was coined by Clay Clay Travis, right? I didn't hear it before. That. Yeah. So I would say it was coined by Clay Travis. And it was saying that if you get if you get too far into social justice and you talk about it or you bring politics into sports, people are gonna stop watching, your company's gonna go broke, your league's gonna go broke, all, all of these things. So he was the person who coined it. And I said it from then, and it has only been reaffirmed so many times that it was a lie and it was an opportunity to get people all riled up. That's just the truth. And it started kind of with when Colin Kaepernick was announced by Nike as their uh, spokesperson and that they had still been paying him and all this stuff. And this was what, in 2018? And... And there was so many people, oh, Nike's going to, their stock price is going to tank because Republicans buy sneakers too. And that, and that they were going to suffer irreparable damage. Well, Nike pandemic aside has been their, their stock prices almost doubled. They are, they're, they're selling more shoes than ever. They, it, the, the company is thriving. Like there, there is no problem. And granted, and that's even suffering some of the backlash that came from China and all of this stuff. But the whole get woke, go broke crowd. And then so they said it about Nike. Has that been true? Absolutely not. They said the same thing about the NFL. Oh, the NFL. No, no, no. They came out with this video. Too much social justice. They apologized to Kaepernick. We're going to stop watching football in 2016 when Kaepernick was kneeling and then when uh, a year ago, when uh, when Roger G Goodell went on with Emmanuel Acho and apologized, basically. And it was like, no, they were like, look at the N NFL ranking, ranking ratings tanking. No, man. In 2016, we were in the middle of a contentious election. Same way as we were in 2020. Ratings were still like you're still looking at 16 million people per per game. Like that, no other sport does this. So there's no getting woke going broke. And then the N NFL just signed over a hundred billion dollar TV deal. There's no get woke going broke. It's a lie. They said the same thing about the NBA. NBA ratings are tanking. Well, now that we're not in a pandemic and all the sports aren't playing at the same time, MLB college football, the NFL, hockey, all of that at the same time. Oh, NBA playoff ratings up 39%. It's a lie, and it was a lie from the beginning, and that's why they don't even talk about it anymore. It's a lie to get you riled up, and it fooled you, and I hope it didn't fool you, but if it did, then I feel sorry for you. But to go even further from, from, from that the NBA is getting ready to redo its TV deals. Its TV deals on the last thing were worth about $24 billion. Now they're looking in upwards of $75 billion. And um, IEG estimates that the NBA made a record $1.46 billion in sponsorship revenue, up 6% year over year. And that's just under the 1.62 that the NFL made during the pandemic season. They picked up 13 new sponsors. Microsoft, uh, alcohol, insurance, all of this stuff. So, Ralph, the, the, the get woke, go broke crowd that was riled up and started and would stay on my timeline and my mentions they I, they won't even admit this now because they won't talk about it. They, they'll, they'll just keep either trying to move the goalposts or just move on to something else to get their crowd riled up. And that's why you are here for the truth. Because if it were something else, I would absolutely tell you.
And I've been critical of players like Ky- Kyrie Irving, who I've said as he's got a good heart, he wants to do the right thing, but sometimes he forgets that he's an entertainer, that he's paid big money to entertain people. So where where do you stand on this, Ralph? The results, the results are the results. Okay, so early September 2018 is when Clay Travis said uh, that Nike had made the dumbest move ever in the history of their brand. <laughs> that was September. Uh, that was set around September 3rd, um, 2018. And on September 4th, he pointed out that Nike stock opened $2 uh, down in pre-market trading and pre-market trading it was $2 down and it cost Nike three billion in market cap. That was something he pointed out on September fourth, twenty eighteen. George, if you invested one million dollars, one million dollars on the day that uh, Nike announced its partnership with Colin Kaepernick, Kaepernick, uh, oh, you always get mad at me for this. <laughs> if 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 you invested one million dollars in Nike on the day that they announced their partnership with Colin Kaepernick. You would currently have, and remember, it's get what go broke, biggest mistake in Nike history, right? You would currently have one point eight six one million dollars. Oh, I, I would, I would love to get, I would love to go broke like that. I would love to go broke, doubling my money. Right, Dude. right, and that, and that's just another thing that you you bring up. Clay Travis is wildly successful in this sports media business and, and essentially beyond he is taking over Rush Limbaugh's time slot to ultimately talk about politics and the culture war, not just as it relates to sports, but overall, I remember I used to work in a corporate office cubicle job and people were frustrated by the amount of meetings that we are having time wasting redundant meetings, getting people away from their desk, taking them away from their ability to do work. And there were complaints about the amount of meetings that we were having. And they wanted to make sure that everybody's voices were heard um, about, you know, the fact that we felt like these meetings were all wasting time. So what do you think they did, George? They s- shut down the meetings or they stopped letting people talk. No, they called a fucking meeting. <laughs> they called a meeting to talk about how many meetings there were? Yes. Yes. Because meetings are undefeated. Like, it will... <laughs> right? It's, so, it's like, like sub subcommittees to investigate things. Yes. Yeah. You, you got to keep big meeting in business. And it just reminded me of, like, man, Clay Travis came out and said, like if you bring politics into sports, there's such a low appetite for that, that me pushing back against that is going to have me actually come up. Like this dude called a meeting to stop the meetings and he came up off it. Like it would be like going into a meeting about stopping meetings and showing such good leadership skills in that meeting about stopping meetings that they put you in charge of all the meetings from there on out. <laughs> dude, dude, think, think about this. He had Josh Howley, Senator Josh Howley on his radio show, Donald Trump on his radio show. Why do you say people don't want it to mix politics and sports, but they I absolutely have... do. People want to hear their values and views reflected in the media. They consume or they want to hear things that wake them up and maybe make them a little bit angry. There's a lot of people that hate listen to a lot of stuff. Hopefully we can be that for you. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I have said it from the beginning. Politics have always been a part of sports. Always. It's never been. I mean, you go back to uh, when Jesse Owens ran in the Olympics and then went to go uh, when, when we ran in Germany to run in front of Hitler. That was politics. It was when you've had the um, so many athletes speaking out about Vietnam War, including M- Muhammad Ali. That was politi- 
politics, even though it's really humanity. The, the, and the, sports is just part of life, man. Yes. Bill Bradley, Bill Bradley ran for president. Gerald Ford was a football player. He was president of the United States. George W. Bush was a college cheerleader. That's sports. It is. It's it's an it's an activity, but okay. Oh, don't don't. The one thing that I've definitely learned is you don't shit on cheerleading because they you will just get like ninety thousand comments about the time that somebody sprained their ankle because their base didn't catch them. No, and no, how, I'm not. I'm not and, saying that and, you cannot get injured or that cheerleading is not difficult. I'm not saying that at all. But, but you're not, not saying sport. that it's a sport. Okay, no, it is so not there a sport. you go. It's a, it's a it's direct a all your comments to at George Reister on Twitter. I don't want anything to do with this. <laughs> so, but 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 the whole idea, though, I mean, even when it comes to the Mitchell report as it related to baseball, uh, Kurt Flood and free agency. Like how many the NCAA has been sued so many times for at, over antitrust stuff, even from the coaches and their pay pay scale and their pay salaries. So politics has always been involved in sports. People do you just consider didn't it like the issue? They didn't want you, to talk about the issue of race. Do you consider it politics in sports for the NFL to accept millions of dollars from the military to? advertise the military yes, that happened while i was playing we were never out of the locker room for the national anthem and then all of a sudden the doj starts paying the nfl nba and hockey and the mlb to honor our to for patriotism shows that's bringing politics into i mean it our military should be honored like i have no like there is a difference I think that it that is hard for people to un, uh, understand or even really don't differentiate sometimes that there is a big difference in how people feel about the quote unquote military in general as it relates to the higher ups and how they feel and the decisions that they make versus our soldiers, sailors, airmen and troops and Marines, the people that are actually boots on the ground. I think that the, that the sentiment is different surrounding those people as opposed to the people who are in charge who would never set foot on a battlefield. I just have a prevailing theory that if somebody on the right was kneeling for a cause that was near and dear to some people on the right, that they would have understood. Period. Yes. If if Tim Tebow, when he was with the Broncos, knelt for the national anthem and they put a camera in his face and instead of saying police brutality and uh, uh, seizure laws and three strike rules and systemic racism within um, law enforcement, instead of that being his issue, if he was just like, I, I feel a little bit unsettled standing for the national anthem in a country where X number of babies are aborted every single day. If he had done that, then everybody, everybody, everybody who feels like that is an issue important to them would have said, you know what? He's right. Yep. It's not, it's not the, uh, it's not the act. It's the issue. People Correct. are lobbyists for their own self interest. It was, it's, it's all, oh man, here we go. It's all blue lives matter, thin blue line, right? Until it's the police that are keeping you from getting into the Capitol. Yep. Right. Exactly. Like it, it just, it, and people want to say that's hypocrisy. You know, it's, it's all, it's all peace on earth. Right. Until, until, uh, you can dress in all black and go bust up a Trump alley with a uh, rally with some billy clubs. Right. And uh, do, do some Antifa stuff. You can be pro peace, anti violence, unless you got to use violence to make your point. Um, everybody is a lobbyist for their own self interest. Everybody will discount the methods that they view uh, reprehensible for because somebody they will else. Deem it necessary for them. Exactly. And that's just the way. And so I, it was always hard for me to take critics of Colin Kaepernick seriously because I know for a fact that there are things that they're passionate about that, that if somebody took similar action, they wouldn't be 
it, the all lives matter people started flying blue and orange and green and red lives matter flags. They immediately got away from all lives matter to specify certain types of lives and yeah. emphasize certain types of lives. And because they never once that mattered the most to them. Right. Because it's the thing that you are, that matters to you. The eyes that you see through are the ones that you get your full picture from. It's, and it's just, and, 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 every, and everybody's, you know, I don't know. It, it's very, very frustrating to see. And when it comes to the national anthem as somebody who like covers high school sports, and sometimes that can be at a tournament where ugh, there's eight games in a day and they're playing it before every single game. And, and now you just see people looking around the arena to make sure that everybody's either on their best behavior or point out whether somebody is or is not honoring the flag. And the whole thing has become such a mess. Uh, there was one guy, uh, there's a high school in Arizona, the high school I went to, Chandler High School, the players all season long knelt for the national anthem. All season long. A reporter, a, a photojournalist, not a reporter, a photojournalist went out to a game, took a picture of the kids kneeling, kids, children, kneeling for the national anthem, tweeted out the photo and said, I thought we were done with all this disrespecting the flag stuff. Number one, those are children that you're posting pictures of online. Number two, you were taking photos during the national anthem. How is that any different than not standing there with your hand over your heart? Dude, dude, people like, pe like, like you, like you said, because there are rules and codes of conduct for the flag. You're not supposed to wear it on clothes. You're not supposed to do all of these other things to it. And they continuously do it. But that's not disrespect because it only matters what you think about it. And those rules are dumb as hell because American flag bandanas are cool. And <laughs> so are patches on sleeveless jean jackets of uh, of Midwest bikers. All right. <laughs> um, all right. The, the next thing up. It is time for cancel or consequence. Cancel or consequence is the point in the show where we talk, where we examine something out in the world and we will say whether this person received is being canceled or are they receiving consequences for their actions. And now, so if you remember from last week, oh, I got to find the video again, um, where the, it was the, Tour de France, and you had the person holding the sign uh, cause a huge crash at the Tour de France. And that turned into an epic disaster. And so many people got, got hurt. It was a pileup. And now that person cannot be found. Um, and that the person is missing and authorities are planning to pursue her. So is this just been arrested? Oh, just, just got arrested. Oh, yes, that's sir. new news. See, I love when we get new news while we're on the podcast. Let me read this to you. Uh, it's from complex.com. The woman responsible for the huge pileup during the tour de France has been arrested after a day's long search. The 30 year old 30, can you? I, I thought that was like an old lady. 30-year-old turned herself in at a police station in France. She stands accused of involuntarily causing an injury and putting the lives of others at risk. Um, it had been reported that she had fled the country after the Tour de France um, deputy director, Pierre-Yves Fenault, said that he had planned on actually like suing this person. Um, and, and I think that the announcement of them saying that they were going to sue her was sort of a warning shot to back everybody off. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So the 30 year old woman who caused that massive accident is, uh, and had fled the scene is now in police custody. And what do you, what do you think the penalty for something like this should be? Oh my God, bro. Like. Okay, so she messed up the Tour de France. Like that would that would be like knocking down a hundred people in a marathon. You change the result of it. I I, I know that that the uh, 
a marathon is one day versus the Tour de France, which is all these days that add up with points and all of that. But you could have affected the ending of an annual race. I, I just, I, and you injured people. I don't know if it was intentional or not, but this has got to go stiff fine major penalty and if there's any evidence that the person was that this was premeditated on any level you you got to go to jail for a couple years just to be like just as like a we are well actually no I think you got to go to jail anyway because it's got to be enough to deter other people from doing it because we saw in the NBA what happened when fans started throwing stuff, then other fans started throwing stuff, even after the other people got banned. So until there were criminal charges that people were going to be facing, that's the only thing that stopped people from doing it. <laughs> I, I don't know. It is an accident. It is was it an accident. Though? Do you put people in jail for being careless on the road and causing like a seven car. Sometimes. Yes. I love yes. Sometimes you do. If you do something so negligent, that's why there is a difference. So, so Ralph, Ralph, if I'm spinning a gun in the air, like, like this around and it goes off and some random person get, gets hit. Am I going to go to jail or face some serious consequences? Yeah, probably, but because I was but, being negligent, right? Yeah, but if you're like the Liberty Mutual tax sign spinner guy and you're flipping it around and it slips out of your hands and goes into traffic, one person swerves into another, are you going to go to jail? Because that's the equivalent no. of what happened here. No, right? This that's is an not accident. the okay. So then, how do you d deter somebody from doing it intentionally then and saying it's an accident? That's why I think he said that they were going to pursue civil action because I don't know what you can do criminally be because this is not something if one person had fallen off their bike and there wasn't a pileup, this is not something that they they are trying to react based on the result, not yeah. based on what was actually done. So so is this so is this lady receiving consequences or is she being canceled? This is, uh, it's definitely not cancel culture. It doesn't fit the criteria for cancel culture because I just don't know her name or job or anything like that. Yeah, 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 correct. Yeah, we, we, we don't know her name, job, all, the, all of that. So I agree with you there. I would say that she's re receiving consequences and she should receive some serious consequences, not just for her, because sometimes I think you have to send a message to other people to deter other people from doing stupid shit. I guess uh, French jail can't be that bad. <laughs> have you ever watched the world's toughest prisons or like prisons around the world on Netflix or something like that? I watch stuff like that. You think you think French jail is bad? See the I I I'm wondering if it's like Man in the Iron Mask bad. Like if she's gonna be no. shackled no, 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 to no. a wall. French, I don't want to see that happen. French jails don't seem to be that bad. Like it, it's not like a, but like some of these jails and some of these Eastern Europe European co uh, countries are really really bad, bro. How about this? If you've done time in France. Hit us up at I'm mad at unafraidshow.com <laughs> or 818-293-7547. If you've been to jail in, in France, tell us how it was. All right. Uh, the next thing up is. Oh, uh, well, I get I. Well, all right. So now we're on to the WNBA. So the WNBA where people have said it's 25 years old. A lot of people are like, oh, man, it's not the NBA. Nobody wants to watch it. Well, apparently people do. College basketball, women's college basketball signed a $500 million deal with ESPN because apparently the ratings are there. People have an appetite for it. If you build it, they will come. And people uh, have said they've seen an uptick in how many people watch the softball World Series, which is 
probably for for me the most outstanding college sport besides college football to 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 watch and 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 I love the tournament and I love the 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 NCAA tournament and bat basketball but softball is just it's just the game is fast it's just outstanding but the uh the WNBA has been gaining steam it's been gaining traction and now more and more people know about it. It's got stars, Sabrina INSQs in the State Farm commercials with Chris Paul, all of that. This is something that I think is absolutely, it's, people have an appetite for it. It's different than men's basketball. Like, you don't have to compare the two to enjoy the two. I 1 million percent agree. Um, I was lucky enough to live in Arizona for much of the last um, 15, 16 years as the Phoenix Mercury built up uh, steam, won three championships, got a hold of Diana Taurasi. She's missed a couple of seasons for, for, for a couple of different issues, but for the most part, she's remained consistent. They got the number one pick and used it on Brittany Griner, who was considered kind of a generational big um, and then, you know, most recently they added uh, somebody who I, uh, and unashamed to say that uh, after meeting and watching her play um, right after she left Notre Dame, completely fell in love with. But Skylar Diggins Smith yes. is now a, a member of the Phoenix Mercury. I remember when Drake tried to hit on her when she was dude, engaged. Dude, I, I had a crush on Skylar Diggins. Oh, and- I had. <laughs> No. And, and and she can ball like, and she's really, really cool to the fans all about growing the game, super marketable. Nike made a bunch of money off of her, um, uh, selling sports bras and stuff like that. Uh, and now the Phoenix Mercury just signed a $66 million 15 year deal with Bally's corporation, which owns, Bally's Casino, fitness centers, and also now all the Fox Sports regional channels are under the umbrella of Bally's, I believe. Yep. Um, They bought them from Fox had sold them to Sinclair. I think Bally's bought them from Sinclair is is how I understand that deal um, to have worked. Um, But I, I just think the more commercialized you see, the more you see NBA players supporting it. I think George, there's something to the argument that everybody has been making that exposure actually influences interest. Um, And I think back to all the stories that people tell about how the NBA finals used to be on tape delay. Yes. The WNBA. And that was in the 70s. And that was in the seventies up until the, like the, like 80 or 81. That's not that long ago, and the and the NBA had been in existence for almost thirty years prior to that. So, like, so if the if the NBA, if the WNBA was still tape de- delayed in year thirty, then they would still have been on par with the NBA. But the NBA was almost getting ready to go under. WNBA is not going under; it's only growing. Like, chill, bro. And I think I think about um, a couple of other things that were invested in by the television networks that I kind of got into just because they were available. One of which was, do you remember ESPN would do their two hour um, morning show on Sundays and then they didn't have NFL games that kicked off at one Eastern. So what would come on? I don't remember. Bowling? Bowling. Yes, bowling. bowling. Yeah. Yeah. And there were times Pete when Weber. either, yeah, well, like Cardinals games would be blacked out locally or they wouldn't kick off till two. And I'd sit there, watch bowling for like an hour. And I could name like six or seven people. And then they had all of those World Series of Poker uh, tournaments that they would play over and over yep. and over again. Not only have I, ne- I've maybe three times in my life played Texas Hold'em, but not only did I end up memorizing like, the top 15 Texas Hold'em players from watching it on television. I had seven or eight friends actually for over a year go into making their living playing tournament poker Yep, based off of just the fact that it was available. And so sometimes I, that argument would hit my ear weird because I'm a women's basketball fan. It's definitely a different game. I was lucky enough to play against two WNBA players when I was in high school. They were at the same school that I went to 
And, you know, they won back-to-back championships. They practiced against us when we were freshman boys. We practiced against the varsity girls, and they they just destroyed us. And, and, and that kind of, like, planted that seed of being my mom played basketball. Like, I, so I've always been kind of a fan of the game, and then I've covered high school sports, so you grow to appreciate it. But I get anybody who doesn't like it, and they put it to athleticism and excitement or whatever. I hear those arguments. But I don't think it's a reason to outwardly hate on WNBA. And I think a lot of people think that the people are trying to force women's basketball down their throat. You can simply just not watch it. You don't have to go to the extent where you get on Twitter and reply kitchen in the uh, replies of every single WNBA tweet. Uh, Free uh, plug, by the way, WNBA, you should definitely take that insult and make a WNBA cookbook. Oh, my. Yes, dude, dude. Since everybody's already telling you to get back in the kitchen, you might as well capitalize on it. Dude, I I remember Charles Barkley (laughs) on Inside the NBA. This fool said, why do you never buy a woman a watch? Come on now. What, What is it? Because there's a clock on the stove. Okay. Okay. And I that, I have a watch on my wrist and I still walk and look at the microwave. So I'm, I, <laughs> there are no, certainly. No, no, no. I'm, I, I was just I making know. that point no, because, I, because people say kitchen all the, uh, the other time. But dude, look. These women are ballers, and they would tear your ass up. I, I know that they don't oh, believe that's some that. But. Toughest conversation. Toughest conversation in the world. Is to have people understand that, like, Candace Parker because- will will give you that business, and she's like six five, so we're like six three, six six five, whatever, what whatever it is, and some of these other women will too. Um, but now, guys, it is time for the best segment in all of streaming shows. It is the best of social media. The best of social media is where we literally show you the best of social media. Um, not of not all of it's positive. So, Ralph, since we have been on, here is the headline: the eighty three old the eighty three year old comedian, insert Bill Cosby, was released from prison on Wednesday. After Pennsylvania highest court has overturned his 2018 conviction where he was found guilty on three counts of aggravated indecent assault, Cosby served nearly three years of what was supposed to be a three to ten year sentence when his conviction was overturned, according to the AP. The court's decision came after it found that Cosby should not have been charged based on an earlier agreement with the top prosecutor. My thought on that is. I find that this is a problem with the justice system. All right. Is that is that for, forget what Bill Cosby was accused of doing or anything like that. My 40,000 foot view of this is the man served three years of a 10 year sentence for what the court. Agreed that the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania agreed that he should not have been convicted of because of some technicality. It doesn't mean he didn't do it. But the fact that he it took three years and he had to stay in jail for three years for something that the court said he should not have been in jail for, I think is a problem. That's my that's my take on it, as opposed to. If, if he did all the things that, that they said he did, his ass should be under the jail. So this is not a pro-Bill Cosby statement. This is just an overall view of the justice system is where I saw from what I read. Okay. Um, this is news to me as you're, as you're breaking it. I, I did go on Twitter as you're talking and see that Felicia Rashad um, – has loudly congratulated Bill Cosby and turned her replies off. Um, three years. He did three years in jail. That's what you're telling me, right? Yes. So Bill Cosby did 1,095 days in jail, approximately. Um, and if you divide that by the number of women who have accused him of assaulting him, he did uh, 19 days in jail per woman. Dude, 
Okay. So. And I understand how the legal system works. I understand how the legal system works. I also understand what goes into not reporting assaults um, and feeling powerless and the power dynamic and everything like that. I'm, I mean, I, I don't really have anything to say about it. The, the justice system is the justice system and, and people yeah. get, off well, on well, technicalities all to, the time. Yeah, we don't have to comment on wh- how we feel about it because it's uh, that's not even important at this point in time. Nineteen days per accusation. Yeah. So, but th- this is going to divide people a lot because there's a lot of pro Bill Bill Cosby people, and this hurt my heart when he went to jail just because he was a dude that you looked at like I wanted him to be my dad on the Cosby show. I had a good dad. And I still was like, I want Cliff. Cliff I would Huxable. trade. No, the, one of the best episodes of television I ever watched in my life is when he dreams because he's an obstetrician, right? He's he's like a, a baby doctor. Yeah. He falls asleep and has a dream that he's pregnant. And he gives birth to like a six foot party sub and a two liter bottle of yeah. soda. To this day, that's the funniest shit I have ever seen in my life. And uh, no, it was incredibly disappointing. And you knew what he meant to not just the culture, but America. And, you know, it, but that's, that's how it is. I feel the same way about, I don't know if you know who Ravi Zacharias is, um, but that was another guy that was super influential um, to a lot of, a, a lot of people. And it just came out after he died. Um, and he was a guy who had a bunch of like um, apologetics ministries. So like he would discuss how the Bible and Christianity actually fit in with history and carbon dating and there's yeah. evidence for scripture and all that stuff. And he would do it in such a way that like cared for other people and wasn't combative. A lot of people thought the world of him. And after he passed away, they found out that he owned several massage parlors and he would go to them and coax these women into situations that they were uncomfortable with and had multiple people sign NDAs. And it just reminded me of the whole Cosby situation of like, people are more than one thing. Um, and, uh, and while I believe that there should be justice, um, I definitely believe that we should get to a point in society. And I think that's everybody's goal. Even though a lot of people see it as an overcorrection, we should get to a point in society where we can actually, believe an accusation that somebody is making so that it can be investigated thoroughly so that people can get justice in the moment and not get away with things for years and years and years. Yep. Um, now the next thing, uh, which is on a more, the, uh, all of the rest of them are, are much better than this. I promise. <laughs> I was like, that's not the best of social media at all. Um, so, okay. So I guess this would be the best of social media. So if that got you all in your feels, this will get you all in your feels in a different story. So this here, this picture that we're showing you is of Gwen Goldman. She's 61 years old. And no, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm sorry. She's 71 years old. And in 1961, 10 year old Gwen Goldman wrote a letter to the Yankees, Yankees asking to be a bat girl. Her request was denied because she was a girl there because they're bat boys. There are no bat girls. Like how, how can a girl run out there and pick up a bat and give it to players? Like how, how the hell is that supposed to work? That sounds, sounds outrageous. It sounds crazy. Radical idea. Well, now Gwen Goldman, 60 years later, has been given that opportunity. Last night, she got to be the bat girl for the Yankees. I love it. I, I And I love the fact that the Yankees, they, they understood that this, I don't know how they found out about it, but this lady, Gwen Goldman, the, the smile on her face in the pictures, I mean, she looks like the happiest person in the whole wide world. Women love sports too. Nothing wrong with her being a bat girl or if she's appropriately skilled or even a boy is sitting out in the, out down the right or left field line to get the ground balls and hand them to the fans that, that go foul. I love this story, Ralph. I'm going to send you something that just gave me huge goosebumps and we'll see if you can, uh, if you want to present it to, the listeners because it's 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 more than just access for one like a lot of people are super inspired by this and i i I have massive 
uh, goosebumps. But yeah, I mean, you just see, you just see a lot of opportunities being opened up oh, to wow. people that they didn't used to get. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna let you read it because it's okay. just man, I got, I got, I got my my hair standing up. So on the so Rachel Balkovic, Balkovic, she tweeted out. 60 years of change in a photo. So she said yesterday, Cashman helped her fulfill her dream of be, of Gwen, Gwen, Gwen Goldman um, about being a Batgirl. Also yesterday, it was Rachel Balkovich's first game as a hitting coach with the FCL Yankees. Coincidence? Probably not. But I love it. So, so, so she's not with, with with the big Yankees, but she's part of their farm system, and she's one of the hitting coaches. Dude, I, I, I mean, granted, she may have been a, a softball player or a baseball player. I don't know what she was, but she looks for some reason she looks like she can hit a damn baseball. I, I just trust her. Yeah, according to according to her bio, she's been in the in uh, the um, baseball for ten years. Uh, working in different aspects and she was just named a hitting coach with the with the Yankees Florida Coastal League team and you know you see that the um you see that the Red Sox uh like have a a, a base coach that's a um a female you see that um one of the most influential people in the Phillies organization I believe Hannah Huseman their mental skills coach um is is female and she's kind of front and center and they make her prominently featured um, we, we got a female GM now we got, uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have a female assistant defensive line coach. Um, I, I still, it's still wild to me every time I see a female NBA referee, just because it was, you know, for the longest time, it, it just, everything felt like such a boys club access. Um, you know, the, the, this, like some people listen to this and they're like, like, wow, this is the most like women's outside of your kitchen joke. Uh, like this, this is super oriented around around like uh, um, women coming up and women's rights and everything. I just think access is awesome. I don't care who it is, like making sure that people have access to what's available so that they can participate in the joys of sports. That kicks ass. The more, the merrier. Um. Yeah. So I totally agree with that, dude. That is absolutely awesome. Um. And. And just just the idea though that women can't be coaches because it's a male sport, dude. Co- coaches was coaches can absolutely do like Oregon's o- offensive line coach who just had the, what the sixth pick in the draft. He is big. He he's a tiny man. He's a tiny man. He's like five eight a buck. 70 dude and he's the offensive line coach so you know so that lets you know he was not an offensive lineman on any level but um but yeah so the one of the oh, so, so we got two more things for the best of social media um first thing is in the beginning of the show we talked about your boy ralph's favorite rapper push push and there's another rapper kodak black who's from florida as well just just so happens um here is him allegedly throwing a hundred thousand dollars in cash into the water and then later flushing it down a toilet That's mental illness. Bruh, like, I don't understand. Like, how... I Okay, let, let, let's just logically think about it. I'm so rich, I'm going to throw money off a boat. Just throw it away. That's how rich I am. Do you realize that, like, that is the anti-thing that, that wealthy people do. Like, that's new money b- behavior. That's not old money b- behavior. As rich as... Is there any way that you think that Jay Jay Z, who's had money long enough that he's not new money anymore, you think that there's any way he would throw a hundred thousand dollars just throw it in the trash or or flush it down the toilet, or do you think that he would shit buy a new watch 
or just do, I mean, just, or give I it away. To, I hate to become LLC Twitter for a second, but that's $25,000 to four different businesses that you can take 10% of for the rest of that business's life. Like, <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't make for a cool video when you're just walking around handing out stacks of cash who, to, to, to people who are trying to come up. It's just dumb. It's 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 like it's bad optics. It's stupid. It makes you look foolish. I don't know, man. And it's somebody who has been in the news a million different times for a million dumb things and had their own free Kodak hashtag, you know, Lamar Jackson saying his name every time he runs off the field, free Kodak or whatever. But I, it's just I don't know. It's corny. You did just say uh, you made me curious because you just called Pusha Eisty my favorite rapper, uh, which is quite incorrect. But I want to know who's your who's your favorite rapper, George? Alive? Yes, alive. Jay Z, Jay Z and Eminem, tie at the top. But but as far as younger younger guys, I got to go with J Cole probably. Okay. I like people who have something to say. Oh, 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 and then and then Drake too. So th- those are my top top four right now. Top four just happen to be like top four of the top selling artists of our lifetime. Some of the best artists of our generation. Okay. I don't know what to tell you. Okay, can who you are, can you guess mine? Um, OT Genesis. Um, I don't even know. I don't even know who that is. Uh, Polo Polo G. <laughs> no. Uh, um, in in uh NBA money, uh NVP NBA money because they 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 all got YNB ONB. Oh. UN- <laughs> I'm a Kendrick guy. Really, all the way, man, uh, all the way. I like Kendrick. I don't love Kendrick, but but I appreciate Kendrick though because he does have something to uh, say, which I am which. Which my which my kids, Dad, you care too much about lyrics. I'm like, listen, because I don't want to listen to dumb shit. Um, it matters. It definitely matters, but it matters more now than it did when we were kids. We listened to some dumb ass shit when we were kids. Like back, like back that thing up is like 30 years old at this point. That was a classic, dude. Yeah, man, what you mean? You gotta back that ass up. All right, all right. No, juvenile. First of all, in that song. Juvenile doesn't even try to rap. He just says yeah at the end of everything. That's not rap. He's like, I'm going to take my dog, yeah, to the park, yeah. Get a snack, yeah. Applebee's, yeah. Like, no. But that was Lil Wayne's debut, so that's kind of nice. All right, here's the last thing for the best of social media. Did you pick up any of that? And what's your reaction to him saying that? I saw it after the fact. I mean... He's a pest. Uh, you know, that's kind of a classless move. If you're going to talk, talk to my face. You can go, you know, cross home plate and do all that. Just come to me. Change your own. I mean, uh, is that something you've dealt with him before uh, along those lines? No. No, it's just annoying. We won the W's next to my name there in last place. <laughs> I feel like you enjoy scoreboard more than anybody else. Because it's funny. Like, there's nothing, there is nothing funnier to me. Oh, we didn't, hold on. But, 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 we, we were terrible, bro. So, we, oh, you want to go back and play the judge? So that was. No, 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 no hold on, hold on. Oh. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. All there right. we, so that was there Lucas Giolito. He's a Chicago a pitcher for the Chicago White Sox, right? So he had uh, been um, taken yard by Josh Donaldson of the Minnesota Twins, and and as uh, Josh Donaldson gleefully crossed home plate, he rubbed his hands together and he shouted two different times, "Hands not sticky anymore." <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny. I mean, it's that's that's the funny thing, <laughs> and uh, and that was about the only thing that Lucas Giolito gave up for the rest of the game. He buckled down, he kicked their asses, and then after the game, he says that Donaldson's an effing pest, 
and that and that he has the W next to his last name, and that the twins are in last place. And I do think that's the ultimate scoreboard. But also, it's funny because he was mad enough to go there. Yeah. It's not like when you see somebody say scoreboard with a smile on their face. It's different when somebody says scoreboard and they're like talking. They want your dad to hear it. And they want your dad to call you and be like, hey, son, uh, that guy was right. You're a loser. (laughs) Oh, my God. Dude. Yeah, bro. It is. Dude, I love it. I, I loved every part of it. I love what Josh Donaldson did, and I loved what he did. Baseball and its rivalries, I'm telling you, that's the, the thing that baseball needs. It needs controversy. It needs Padres. It needs Tat- Tatis backing, running around the bases backwards. I know it pisses people off, but it needs it. It makes fans just care that much more about the games and the rivalries and all of that stuff. I remember when uh, I remember when the Dodgers beat the Diamondbacks. Um, I don't know if it was for a playoff spot. I can't totally remember. But what I do remember is they jumped over the wall into the pool and pissed in it. Oh, I remember God. thinking at the time, like, oh, man, Diamondbacks fans are going to be mad for a good five years off this one thing alone. Like, pissing in the pool was great for baseball. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you guys, that's Reister or Wrong for the day. I'm George Reister. He is Ralph Amson, and we will catch you guys on Friday. Peace out.